So, hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture in the DC DC converter lecture series. So, in the previous lecture or rather this is where I left off where I had completed the simulation of a boost converter. So, in this lecture I am going to get started with setting up the buck boost converter which will be the next converter that we are going to look at in this lecture series. So, before I get started as always a little bit of background about this project. If you are interested in these kind of videos, but you find this a little too light to learn power electronics, I have a full length course on simulating power electronic circuits using Python. It is on Udemy and this course covers a lot more about simulations than what I am doing in these YouTube videos. It also has a complete example on simulating a buck converter. So the link for this course is provided in the description for the video. So if you are interested, check out the description of this video. Other than that, the all the samples, all the code samples are uploaded to this account which is Gumroad. So, if you want to download them, you can download them. This is the simulation which I have done so far. The, the files are available here. The link for this is also provided with this uh, in the description of this video. So, if you want to download the files of a boost converter, feel free to check out this link. So, now that we are here, I will get back to my uh, lecture on buck boost converter. So, before I get started, let us go and have a look at the circuits. So, this was the boost converter, right? And let us put the boost converter next to the buck converter. Actually, all I have to do is zoom in and let me just zoom in a little. So, this is the buck converter. And let me also zoom out here. So, this is the boost converter. Okay, so I have these two converters next to each other. So, now that I have these two converters next to each other, let me examine how they are with respect to each other. So, as I said before, there is a difference in the buck and boost converter with respect to how the input source supplies energy to the output source. In the buck converter, the input voltage or rather the input source energizes both the inductor as well as the capacitor, right? So, therefore, the energy of the input is split between the inductor and the capacitor and that is the reason why the voltage of the capacitor is always lower than the voltage of the input. It becomes a buck converter, right? In a boost converter, we are energizing the inductor, right? We are energizing the inductor and later it is both the input and the inductor which energizes the capacitor. So, the it is the input rather the energy from the voltage source and the energy from the in inductor which are used to charge up the capacitor and this is the reason why the voltage of the capacitor output capacitor is higher than the voltage of the input which is why you have a buck you have a boost converter. Now, in a buck boost converter, you want both. You want the option of having an output voltage which is lower than the input voltage and you want an out and you want the option of the output voltage being higher than the input voltage. Both are possible. This is usually the case when you want when you have a battery or you have some kind of fluctuating source which will gradually discharge, but you want an output voltage which is regulated. So, there is a possibility that this regulated output voltage will be lesser than or greater than the input voltage. So, just to account for the fluctuation in the input. Now, in such a case, we need to make a compromise, right? What we do is in the buck boost converter, we decouple the inductor from or rather the inductor is not directly connected to the output. For example, in the buck boost, con in the boost converter, the voltage source was charging the inductor. And later, the voltage source and the inductor were both discharging through the capacitor. In the buck boost converter, things are going to be different. The voltage source is going to charge the inductor and the inductor is going to charge the capacitor. The voltage source does not get connected to the capacitor at all. The voltage source, the input and the output are disconnected, completely disconnected. The coupling takes place through the inductor. So, therefore, by adjusting the amount of energy that you supply to the inductor, you are deciding what will be output, what will be the output voltage with respect to the input voltage, right? So, let us get started. It will be much more clearer then. So, let me just 
close down the buck converter zoom in a little because it's almost impossible to see anything now now that we've done this let me go back to my file browser and create a new directory so this new directory will be called buck boost converter and for the buck boost converter let me go back and save this file into the new directory and here I will call this buck boost converter as always just make sure that you save it as a csv file so it's text.csv all right so now that we've done this let's get started we have to now rearrange as I said the voltage source will now charge the inductor and it is the inductor which will charge the output. So we need the inductor in the middle branch. So let's just cut this out, put it somewhere else. And the inductor now comes into this center branch. And since we have an inductor, it's always, it's necessary that we have a resistor as well because you cannot have a pure branch. So let me just increase this a little. And at the same time, we also have, it's always good to have an ammeter, right? So this is your inductor branch. Now, the voltage source is going to charge this inductor and you want to regulate this. So the way to regulate this is you have a switch in series with this. So let's go and put the switch here. So this is our parallel branch. So what happens is, when you turn on the switch, the voltage source charges the inductor. When you turn off the switch, the inductor now has to free wheel through the output, right? Now, here it's a little interesting. Because of the way that we have designed, it, designed this path, so for example, if the switch is turned on, the current flows in the clockwise direction, right? Which means in the inductor branch, it is flowing from top to bottom. When you turn off this switch, the inductor current has to continue flowing, which means the inductor current will continue to flow from top to bottom, but now has to free wheel through the output path in the anti-clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction, however you want to say it. What that means is this diode will have to have a polarity such that it allows the current to flow from the right to the left, right? Because this is a counterclockwise current. So the cathode of the diode has to be pointing towards the left. Now, the problem with this is, there is, well, it's not really a major problem, but it's one of the features is, because the current is flowing in the counterclockwise direction, the capacitor voltage is negative with respect to the input voltage, right? So if the positive polarity of the input source is above, like towards the upper node, then positive polarity of the capacitor or the output capacitor is towards the lower rail it is a negative voltage and we'll see this later, right? So this way, when the switch is on, the inductor gets charged by this voltage source, input voltage. When the switch is turned off, the inductor now discharges through the output capacitor. It free wheels, right? So this is the concept of a buck boost converter. By controlling how, much, how long you want to keep the switch on, by controlling that duty ratio, you are controlling the amount of energy in this inductor which in turn decides the amount of energy that the capacitor gets, All right? So let's go, let's go and start the simulation. Let's, let's get started. So let's go back to simulation library. We have these two simulations. Let's create a third one. This will be called buck boost converter, right? Simulation description, I'll just leave it to be the same. Time duration can still be one. Integration time step can remain one microsecond. Time step of data storage, let's reduce that a bit to around one microsecond, right? Just to keep these two the same. Output data file can be the same. Slice the output file, no need. Directory with circuit files, very important parameter. Let's go back to our file browser. Let's choose this and go to properties. And in properties, we have the parent folder. Let's copy that and paste it here. Save the simulation parameters. So 
it says OK, so which means it has been accepted. Now let's go back to the main page. Now we need to add this file. So to choose the file, let's go choose. Make sure you are in the right directory, all right? Because remember, this will continue to point towards the previous directory, which is Boost Converter. So let's go back and choose Buck Boost and choose this file. Let's call this Buck Boost Converter and save the file, all right? So let's process the circuit schematics. And the circuits do not have any detectable error. So we are good to go. So with this, we have now added this simulation or other. Actually, you know what? I should save it and do it again because I believe I had made some changes. So let me go and process it again. Because I just realized that there was a it had not been saved. I just realized this button has had not been saved. So it still is OK because apparently either one, there were almost no changes or two, it was still OK to begin with. So we can now go back and edit the parameters. So let me go and click on this edit circuit parameters. Let's click on the view components button. Now, ammeter. Ammeter C out, as I said, this ammeter C out is going to have a voltage. Now, one thing we can do is we can continue to measure the current in the direction we want. So we are expecting a current in the counterclockwise direction, which means this current will point upwards. So which means the positive polarity is upwards. So let's go. It is the, the current component position is 11A, positive polarity is at 10A, which means it is correct. It is upwards. So that's okay. We can leave it as it is. The diode current. Now the diode current is here and as I said, we are, or it's here rather, and we the current is flowing towards the left. So the component polarity is at 1H, positive polarity is 1G. Again, perfectly okay. We can leave it as it is. The ammeter. The ammeter is at 5F. We want the current flowing downwards. All right. So now, here apparently there is I'm not sure how this is. This is totally wrong. So well, I guess there is a glitch somewhere because it probably chose the wrong parameter. So let's go and add the right one. So it means we want 6F. I'll have to check it out. Probably a bug in the simulator because it should have given either 6F or 4F. Yeah, right. So now it's been corrected. And here we have the ammeter. So the ammeter here is the input ammeter. It is at position 1A, positive polarity is towards 1B and that's perfectly okay because the current is flowing towards the right. The load current. The load current, again, we are expecting a voltage which is around, uh, I would say here. Let us choose the voltage and the current to be still our usual current so that we know at least we are expecting a negative voltage. So let's expect the current to float downwards. So we have a current which is 5Q and it is moving towards 4Q. So let's go and change this to 6Q. This is just because we, we know that the output voltage is negative. So at least if we get a negative voltage, we know that that is what we expect. So now the capacitor. The capacitor is this one. As always, let's choose a 500 microfarad capacitor. And the positive polarity doesn't really matter that much, but we can still choose the positive polarity is to, is towards to is downwards because remember the capacitor is getting charged by a counterclockwise current. And now that this is done, we have the diode. The diode, as I said, the current is flowing towards the left, which means the cathode of the diode is pointing towards the left. So let's go change that. Here, as always, let's just choose a large voltage because the rating of the diode should always be large. And here we have 1J is the component polarity. It should point towards the left, which means 1I and that is what it is. So we can leave that as it is.
and then after that the inductor is 1 micro 1 milli henry let's leave it as it is the resistance of the capacitor the resistance of the capacitor is the equivalent series resistance which is simply a parasitic resistance it does not have to be 100 ohms it cannot be 100 ohms so let's decrease that and then after this we get the resistance r1 let's see what that is the resistance r1 is merely the parasitic resistance of the inductor again we don't need 100 it should not be 100 ohm it's just a parasitic resistance so let's give it something like 0 0.05 no, 50 milli ohm 50 milli ohm is okay because we also have to take into account the core losses of the inductor now the resistance r load the resistance r load is usually should be something which is around 5 ohm that's reasonable because we are usually looking at a dc to dc converter which could be something in the range of 19 9 to 18 volts now finally we come to the switch now the switch is very important the switch we want a polarity to be the negative polarity to be upwards because the current is flowing in the count in the clockwise direction so let's go change this the rating of the rating voltage level should be around 1000 volts the same as a diode good enough the control tag control tag let's give it the same name as the switch now the negative polarity negative polarity is component is at position 5a and we want the negative polarity upwards 4a so let's go change this I think I know what the bug was. The bug was that I had actually clicked on process circuit schematics before saving the file. So it took actually the parameters of the boost converter that I had created before, which is the reason why these parameters are such. Otherwise, it should have updated the parameters. So the negative polarity is now being placed upwards. So let's end this. Well, let's come down we should have a couple of more parameters then the last is of course the voltage source this is the voltage source now again let's have a polarity the positive polarity of the voltage source should be upwards so let's edit this so the po component is at position 8a the positive polarity is 7a which is perfectly okay the peak voltage we don't want an ac voltage source let's make these zero the dc offset all right let's have a voltage source of 12 volts all right so which means we want the voltage source to be a little lower and maybe a little higher so let's say something between 7 to 15 volts anyway we'll see that in the simulation so 12 volts dc offset is perfectly okay because that is like a standard 12 volt car battery and finally the voltage voltmeter now as before like i said let's assume that we still have a positive polarity upwards because then the voltmeter will measure a, a polarity negative so because remember the buck boost converter will produce a negative output voltage the voltage output voltage will have a polarity which is opposite to that of the input voltage so let's at least register the fact that it is a negative voltage by choosing a polarity that's upwards so let's edit this most important increase the voltage level to around 1000 volts Component polarity is at 8s, positive polarity 7s, which means positive polarity is upwards. That's perfectly okay. So let's save the parameters. So with this, we have completed the parameters of the buck boost converter. So this lecture is already getting a bit long, so I'm going to end this lecture right now. If you have any doubts or if you have any questions or comments, please do add it in the comments for this video. Otherwise, email me or message me on social media, whichever it is that you prefer. I will start I will continue this lecture series in next week where we will start simulating this and we will analyze the performance of it. So as before thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now see you next week.